show for today. The topic is the recent elections, uh, the elections of 2007 in Nigeria. And of course, we have with us to talk about the recent elections and the implications for the continent of Africa, Dr. Leonard Madhu. And of course, Dr. Madhu, before we had our first uh, commercial break, we promised that we'd give you an opportunity to talk about the implications uh, for this particular election for the continent of Africa. And let's give you an opportunity to do that now. Well, <coughs> these, these elections are very significant and very important. As I you know, uh, previously uh, stated, uh, this is the first time in the history of the country that one civilian government is handing over to another. Uh, Nigeria is the most populous black country in Africa, mm -hmm. probably the most populous black, black country in the world, with uh, a conservative estimate at this population to be between 140 and 150 million, mm -hmm. uh, with a huge supply of oil. About 15% of the oil that comes to this country mm -hmm. comes from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. you know, so it has a very big role to play. In fact, it's supposed to be mm -hmm. the leader of Africa. Mm -hmm. So in, in that regard, what happens in Nigeria is very important. Mm -hmm. For example, this is, like I stated before, is the first civilian to civilian handover of power. But smaller African countries have undergone that process before. Nigeria should have been the first. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Botswana has been having you know, successive elections where one civilian transfers power to the other. The last one just occurred when uh, Ketumile Masire handed over power to Festus Mohai. Mm -hmm. In Mozambique, you've had a civilian to civilian transfer of power. The last one was from President Chisano to the current president, Guebuza. <coughs> in neighboring Benin Republic, mm -hmm. <coughs> they've had successive transfers of mm -hmm. civilian to, to civilian. Nisoforo Soglo, you know, lost election to Kereku, mm -hmm. transferred power you know, peacefully. Mm -hmm. Ghana has undergone the same process. Uh, Mali has undergone the same process. So why not Nigeria that's supposed to be Nigeria the leader? Nigeria is late in terms of really getting around Ab the Absolutely, doing absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And that's why I emphasize initially that in as much as the people in the country are angry about the elections, mm -hmm. but at least the saving grace is that you have mm -hmm. at least a historic mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. as civilian is handing over mm -hmm. to, to under civilian. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's very important. Mm -hmm. Now, if stability you know, yeah. comes to Nigeria, mm -hmm. then the whole of West Africa will also experience the same, because whenever Nigeria sneezes, you know, every, mm -hmm. every, every other mm -hmm. country in that region you know, catches cold. Mm -hmm. So that's very important. Mm -hmm. And the United States and European countries need Nigeria's oil. Mm -hmm. So it's also in their interest mm -hmm. to see that there's stability mm -hmm. in the country. In fact, if you, if you look at the foreign media, most of the congratulations to the incoming president has been from mm -hmm. members of the European Union, the United States, and, 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 and other countries, mm -hmm. even though they Glad condemn the election. Nigeria doing well. Exactly, mm -hmm. at least that there's stability, no violence, mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, most of these countries have billions of investments in the mm -hmm. country, in oil, mm -hmm. in infrastructure, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so they will want to see a country that is stable mm -hmm. so that their investments you know, can have good returns. Mm -hmm. All those are the interests. Mm -hmm. And moreover, <coughs> most, most of the region, you know, West African region, cannot afford to have an instable Nigeria, mm -hmm. you know, where you have refugees pouring into their mm -hmm. countries. Mm -hmm. So all these things are very important for, for there to be, you know, a sustainable democracy mm -hmm. in, the, in the country. Mm -hmm. so and so this is what you mean when you talk about the stability of it, that democracy can work. If, well, what about the economic situations in reference to, uh, and you've talked about that on a number of occasions, but uh, there's, y you talk about all this wealth and et cetera, but Nigeria, in terms, I would imagine, per capita income, is one of the uh, poor countries uh, in Africa. Well, it, it, it's not as well off as it ought to be. What about that kind of situation? How, how do you deal with that? Well, I think that would be the, the, the some of the challenges mm -hmm. of, of the incoming president. Uh, the outgoing president has you know, tried to introduce some reforms mm -hmm. in, into the economy, which didn't go very far. Mm -hmm. So the incoming president will have a whole lot of economic challenges. Mm -hmm. I, I think what, what he needs to do mm -hmm is do what Deng Xiaoping did in China in 1978. Mm -hmm. uh, when he came to power, he introduced what he called the four modernizations. Mm -hmm. You know, choosing four sectors of the economy that has to be modernized within a, a time period. Mm -hmm. That's what ushered China into his mm -hmm. present economic mm -hmm. prosperity. <coughs> so I think the, the current incoming president mm -hmm. has to 
you know, have, have, have what I might call a five, five modernizations, mm -hmm. you know, to, to modernize the economy. Mm -hmm. A, modernizing the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, B, healthcare. Mm -hmm. C, education. Mm -hmm. You know, D, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And five, tourism. Mm -hmm. These five, you know, key sectors of the, mm -hmm. of the economy need modernization. Mm -hmm. And I think if they are modernized within mm -hmm. a, spe you know, a specific period of time, mm -hmm then the country can be able to sustain mm -hmm. democracy mm -hmm. because the people will be satisfied and happy. Mm -hmm. Then you don't have people agitating. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's not, it's not the case. Mm -hmm. For example, electricity. Okay. Constant shortage of electricity. Mm -hmm. You cannot have your economy develop when half of the time people don't have electricity to mm -hmm. operate. Mm -hmm. Water, the same. Mm -hmm. The roads, the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by modernizing the infrastructure. The infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. if, 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 the, if the president can you know, have a blueprint mm -hmm. for making sure that the country has mm -hmm. adequate electricity supply, mm -hmm. adequate water supply, mm -hmm. you know, good mm -hmm. roads. Mm -hmm. Then he has accomplished some, even mm -hmm. if it's in four years. Mm -hmm. B, agriculture, that sector is neglected. Mm -hmm. It's not seen as a job, mm -hmm. rather, you know, it's not seen as a profession. Yes, Absolutely, uh -huh. once in a while the president comes on TV, you know, operation feed the nation. Mm -hmm. Well, you eat three times a day, not once, you mm -hmm. know. So, so they have to pay attention to modernizing the agricultural production mm -hmm. of the country. Mm -hmm. That's why you have so many elephant projects in Africa, mm -hmm. a whole lot of factories that were built, mm -hmm. cigarette factories, sugar factories, mm -hmm. but you don't have the agricultural base to sustain those mm -hmm. industries. Mm -hmm. So you find out that cigarettes manufactured in Nigeria, no, the tobacco. or, or, sh or mm -hmm. sugar manufactured in Nigeria, cost 10 times. Mm -hmm. it, because tobacco is not grown there. Absolutely, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Tobacco and sugar is not grown, is not there, grown. Even though e the exactly. geography for sugar and tobacco is almost excellent, even in spite of what you might think about sugar, I mean about tobacco, but nevertheless, uh, that's not grown there. And that's, that's a real problem. Absolutely. So they have to end up importing those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. Then it costs 10 times mm -hmm. to, you know, the price mm -hmm. than what is imported. Mm -hmm. So you find out that you have to have an agricultural base mm -hmm. in order to have an industrial revolution. Good. That's of course, Dr. Babadu, let us make preparations for the second uh, commercial break. But essentially, that's uh, the information that we want uh, you to give us in reference to uh, what is going on in Nigeria and the implications that this has. And, and we'll take a, a, a short uh, break. And when we come back during this last segment, that will give you an opportunity not only talk, to talk, continue this conversation, but also to bring in some other things in terms of the United States and the world community in reference to uh, this particular issue. And of course, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short uh, commercial break.